Okay, picking up uh, where we left off on uh, page 57, we're talking about the external factors that can affect a project. And they're listed here, government, technology, suppliers, competitors, those kind of things. Uh, the government is often a big uh, change. For example, let's say you're in the healthcare industry and um, all of a sudden they passed a new law that basically says that uh, you know all healthcare records have to have a certain level of, of protection. And uh, oh my God, all these companies that provided healthcare databases all sprang up and went, ah! And they very quickly put together a new system to meet those requirements. Um, one of the things that's not on here, which is a very common thing, uh, is a company gets bought out by another company. And uh, I'm using brand A uh, software, they're using brand B, and uh, they bought me out, and therefore they're coming in and saying, well, we want everyone in our, our corporate family to be using product B. And so they just swap all the software out. Uh, later on, we're going to be talking about some of the pitfalls and when developing a new system. And, and that scenario I just painted is one of those horrible ones. Let's say, for example, that you have uh, an order fulfillment system, which is fantastic. And yet you're replacing it with one that has less capabilities. It's uh, clumsy, it takes longer, and uh, wow, are you going to be excited to get this new system? Yeah. Okay, so continuing on, page 59, uh, they talk about um, how you can kind of control the, the flow of these requests by producing a goofy little form. Um, you know, and the forms are kind of cool because they, they kind of streamline the process, you know, they make sure that everyone fills out all the pieces. You know, for example, if you always wanted to know, you know, what's a good title for this project, you know, what's it for, how much is it going to cost? So, uh, having a, a form kind of helps people direct their thoughts when they're trying to ask you for these things. So it's an excellent idea. You know, consistency, easy to understand, everyone gets an opportunity. Uh, hopefully that um, it kind of helped with the just that one form by itself, in theory. You could line them all up and prioritize them, but just looking at the form without doing any analysis whatsoever. You could say, okay, Bob, I want you to take this one, that one, and that one, and Sue, I want you to take this one, this one, and this one, and go, go look at them. I could divvy up work, or I can prioritize the work based just on the form alone. Kind of a cool deal. Okay. So on page 60, they talk about a system review committee. Yes, some companies are big enough that um, you know the IT guy alone isn't going to be the one who says, "Well, I think we are going to do this one, this one." You know, you need a, a committee that gets together, and more than likely, it'd be a committee that's made up of you know different parts of the organization that can say, you know, vote on uh, the priority in which these things would work. So it's actually pretty cool, and it does provide a much broader viewpoint. Um, you know, the IT guys by themselves. Uh, tend to be a little, you know, gadget crazy and always want the latest and greatest without regard to whether there's a valid business need. Gee, how many times have I mentioned that? You think it's going to be on the test? Um, so you need more people on the team to provide a different type of, a, of, a, of approach. So yes, uh, you know, one person's bias, let's say one person just absolutely hates Oracle something, and uh, you wouldn't want that to influence a project. You, you want other people involved to kind of reduce those kind of personal biases. And then of course um, there's you know political differences and all sorts of other things involved. But yes, um, working in a, in a team to develop uh, a system to prioritize these projects is probably a good idea. Probably is. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is feasibility. Uh, before you decide you're going to do one of these things, you really need to know can it be done? And there's an awful lot of reasons why you might have a problem. And uh, we're going to go in there in, in great detail. But just kind of an overview of feasibility. It talks about, you know, is the proposal desirable? And we're going to define that a little bit. Um, is the proposal technically feasible? I mean, some people come in and say, well, I want, you know, a holographic interface on my web page. It's like, uh, no. Uh, you know, is, the proposal, is the proposal economically desirable? Are there some intangible benefits that, I, that really can't uh, be quantified? That'd be kind of cool to know. 
and uh, can it be accomplished within a, a time frame that you're that you're under? So again, uh, on page uh, 61, they talk about what we just said: operational, economic, technical, and schedule. So let's do a deep dive into operational. Now, this is where things get a little crazy in that scenario I just mentioned about you know, can you imagine that your existing system is perfect? does exactly what you need, yet because you did a corporate merger, you're going to get a foreign system that you know darn well is worse than the one you got? Okay, so keep that in mind. So, one of the questions you need to find out is, is management fully supporting this, this change? Because if they're saying, ah, dang, I, mean, I guess, you know, we got no choice, I guess we'll put this thing in. Oh, that's going to be a miserable project to work on. Uh, so, do the users support the project? <sighs> is the current system well liked and, and effectively used? Wow. Uh, do the users see the need for change? Oh, man. If you, if you fail on any one of those top three, just right there, that's going to be an absolute miserable thing. Can you, can you imagine, for example, that um, you're... you're putting a new system in place that's going to end up firing an entire section. You know, after they're done, you know, after this new system in place, we won't need those employees, okay? So your job is to go interview them to find out what it is they do to make sure that the, this new system that's going to replace them um, does everything it needs to be there. So you're going to sit down with those guys and they're going to be cheerful and happy and helpful? Uh, probably not. They're going to be pissed and angry and resentful. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if they were kind of withholding information from you. Again, if the users don't want the system you're putting in place, it's going to be an absolutely miserable job. Okay, just to continue on, uh, will the new system result in workforce reduction? Yikes. And if so, what will happen to those employees? Now, you are not management, okay? But trust me, if you walk into an interview with an employee who's going to be replaced, and you don't know the answer to what's going to happen to them, uh, that interview is going to be fall flat. I mean, you're not management, right? You're not really making those decisions, but you need to know the answers before you go in there. Otherwise, you're going to get trampled. Will the new system require training? If so, is the company prepared to provide the necessary resources and training for the current em employees? So, yeah, that's... Um, and it could be that, um, let's say you're... Um, at the end of a fiscal year and uh, you say I'm gonna install this new system and uh, they'll go oh god could you just wait I mean this is our busy time um, you know the holiday season is here or whatever uh, could you come back in January and, and do this so yeah this operational thing has an awful lot to do with how your projects will go will users be involved in the planning of the new system right from the start and hopefully the answer to that is yes. Hopefully it's not a corporate push uh, where somebody else decided what it is you wanted. Okay, so will a new system place any new demands on the users or require any operational changes? Well, hopefully they will require some operational changes because if you remember back, that's basically the only way you can make money is to change your business practices. So for example, will any information be less accessible, accessible or produced less frequently, or will the performance decline in any way? You need to know this, because they're going to ask you. You bet. Will customers experience adverse effects in any way, either temporarily or permanently? Uh, will, the, will any risk to the company's image or goodwill result in this? Um, does the development schedule conflict with other company priorities? Uh, there's a classic example of Symatech. Symatech, um, you know, was releasing their brand new, uh, you know, it was the backup exec version 8, I believe, you know, their flagship product. And at the same time, they swapped out their MIS system and changed their order processing and changed all the, the product codes, you know, that the identified, you know, what the products were. And uh, they did them both at the same time because one team didn't know the other team was doing that. And it was a total disaster. And it actually took you know, months for Symmetech to recover from the blunder. So yes, you need to make sure that what you're doing is at a time frame that, you know, meets the, the corporate goals. Okay. 
Uh, do any legal or ethical issues need to be considered? Wow. So yes, operational feasibility is extremely important. You mess that up and you, it's not necessarily that the project won't work, but your project will be miserable. Absolutely miserable to work on. <clears throat> okay, technical feasibility is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, there's no real gotchas in there. Uh, it talks about does the company have the resources, does it have the hardware, does it have the software, does it have the network. Uh, I know a company uh, locally that said, <clears throat> hey, we want to do a web presence. And I said, well, you know, you really need to host this uh, someplace, um, you know, because dirt cheap to do, you know, web hosting. No, no, we want to host it ourselves. And I went, um, what kind of uh, internet connection do you have? And they said, well, why would that matter? And I'm going, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yes, you need network resources in order to host a web page. Okay, so if you don't have those things, how difficult is it going to get? You know, for example, uh, I know another scenario where, you know, you want to install a new system and they say, oh, well, that requires a server. You need to go talk to this team over here to order a server. And their schedule, of course, is radically different than yours. You know, like, like I have a hardware te team and a software team. And so, yeah, you have to go over there and say, uh, I need a server. And they go, oh, okay, well, we'll put that in our, our budget and come back in six months. So, geez. Okay. Does the company have the needed technical expertise? Uh, for example, you would never want to put in a database without having a, a database administrator. And uh, sometimes you can, you know, homegrown these people uh, if you have the right amount of time. Or you're going to have to hire them. And the company has to know these things because you don't want to just leave them hanging with, okay, here's your new system, and oh, by the way, you're responsible for doing uh, database backups on your own. Uh, and they go, what? How do you do that? Oh, yeah. So there's some more. Um, talks about um, does a proposed platform have any sufficient have sufficient capacity for future? Uh, you don't, don't ever want to build a system that just meets the current requirement. You want to be able to say, well, you know, a year from now, we can just add this other module on or this more storage unit or something or increase the number of processors or something uh, because technical feasibility has a, a very, very short time frame associated with it. Okay, so part of the technical is answering some questions during the this investigation. Like, are you going to use a prototype? And if you are, do you have a system you can do it on? Now, quite frankly, when I've done this, um, I had a really beefy uh, laptop and, um, you know, pretty good sized laptop. And it, I had, you know, like Windows Server on there, plus a virtual machine with a whatever version of the client software, like XP or Vista or 7 or whatever it is the company has. And, uh, you know, I'd show off how all those things work and I'd carry this thing with me to do the demos. But if they're going to do the demos on their product, you need... They may, you may need a temporary database, you know, do they have a machine you can do that on? So anyway, will the hardware and software uh, environment be reliable? Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully it's not, you know, some server in a closet someplace, that they actually really do have a server room, you know, those kind of things. Uh, will it integrate with other company information systems? Uh, yep, uh, you don't want to put in something that's going to be difficult for them to integrate into their existing system. Will it interface properly with external systems operated by customers? Will the combination of hardware and software su supply adequate performance? Do clear expectations and performance specifications exist? Yeah, when you're putting together, for example, you know, a banking system or a order fulfillment system, you probably want to have how many transactions it can handle simultaneously, because that's going to gauge, you know, how many of these units you're going to have and whether or not you need to have another data center someplace else. So these numbers, of course, are really cool. And uh, that's a good place to stop for the 15-minute mark. We'll see you again in just a few seconds.